ప్రత్యేక డే ఫ్రైడే ఎవ్రీ వన్ నోస్ దిస్ ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ సో హౌ టు హ్యావ్ దాట్ ఫీలింగ్ ఎవ్రీ డే ఫ్రైడే ఫీలింగ్ you can come please <laughs> there's enough space can i have an indication of who is here for the first time today 1 2 3 4 5 okay well extra special welcome for those who are here for the first time and my name is rona and i'm one of the students and teachers of this institution it is the brahma kumaris is an international network of schools who teach meditation and inspire people to explore the powers of their mind and to understand try and understand grass the higher state of consciousness and we have these topics every thursday to kind of get a little taste of what is possible so tonight how to have that feeling that every day is friday maybe we could start how do you feel on fridays relaxed <laughs> relaxed or tired <laughs> from the whole week <laughs> Uh, relaxed relieved what else looking forward a nice weekend full of pleasant activities which implies monday to friday are not pleasant activities <laughs> what else what is the feeling on friday you feel free which means which implies monday to friday you don't feel free <laughs> anything else <laughs> interesting no <laughs> to just to observe our thinking there's nothing wrong or what just to kind of get a weekend okay ah, nice relax pleasant you don't have mm-hmm. so what does it mean to be on busy, busy. okay <laughs> busy so on the weekend we don't have to be busy Huh? Like during the week we're on the clock during the weekend no problem whatever any time no time is also good okay what else a different experience on the weekend <coughs> ah interesting on friday it feels like you can take your mask off <laughs> so monday through to friday we are having a mask <laughs> and on friday we take it off and then monday morning we put it on again interesting what else taking the time to do what you love it is your time you can use it the way you want so during the week is not your time some it's controlled by others <coughs> what else how do we feel on friday
Why is there the, this expression, thank God, Friday? <laughs> <coughs> I am excited to sleep <laughs> on Friday. Some people are excited not to have to sleep <laughs> on Friday. <laughs> Anything else? What? Hmm? Two days off, two days free. <coughs> No, no responsibilities? It appears as if Monday through to Friday is a burden. No? <laughs> so what makes it that burden? There's no routine on the weekend. You eat when you want, you sleep when you want, you <laughs> watch television however long you want, you can go out whenever you want, whatever you want. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? That defines that TGIF feeling? T G yeah, I F. That's all. Freedom. Freedom. Okay. <clears throat> so, first of all, it is useful to just observe this. How many days are there in a week? <laughs> so, five days, we don't have that feeling. And then when Friday afternoon, we have that feeling, Saturday we have that feeling, Sunday we have that feeling, and Monday it is gone again. So just two days out of the seven, we feel free, and five days we don't. <coughs> Are we truly free? No. <laughs> What we truly are looking for, and what we truly kind of taste at that moment, is a kind of, or at least the hope of quality of life. Hmm? Qual at least some days, quality of life. <coughs> there is the, what is it, the, the, the promise of quality of life over the weekend. Yeah? And that promise is there because we feel that during the weekdays, there is no quality of life. I'm trying to simplify things. Hmm? Now, is that true? During the week, there is no quality of life. And if there is no quality of life during the week, why is that? You're doing things that you don't enjoy, and you're doing them because it is expected of you. <laughs> now, what defines quality of life, and what defines our quality of life, quality of our life? What defines your quality of your life, the quality of your life? Feeling secure. What was the other freedom? Compassion. No expectations. Anyone else? Yeah, everyone is kind of feel this too. Want to add anything to this? 
Hmm? Fun. Fun? <laughs> Enjoyment. Fun. Enjoyment. Yeah, happiness kind of in this category. Do what you love. Do. <laughs> no, what I'm trying to bring out is why can we experience this during the weekend and we cannot during the week? Does it really depend on the job or the work? Very good. Your mindset. How do you make, how do you create quality of life? How do you create value of your life? What decides the value of your life? People around you? Situations? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So during the week, there is yourself. In the weekend, there's also yourself. So what is different during the week within yourself and what is different within yourself during the weekend? Excellent. Your perceptions of things. If you want to increase quality of life, if you want to... Um, increase value of your life and value of your life's experience, what is the first thing that is with you all the time? Yourself, your thoughts. Your thoughts, your feelings, your internal, uh, what is the word? Uh, your memories, your impressions, your conditions, your ideas. That is what you carry with you. From Monday to Monday, not just Monday to Friday. <laughs> and so, if you value your thoughts, <coughs> then what will you do? You will be vigilant of what kinds of thoughts you have. Now, what has happened with us at this moment in time, our thoughts many times are decided by external situations. Our thoughts many times are decided by other people. Our thoughts many times are decided by what is the situation externally. Means that we are dependent on that. Now, <clears throat> who decides ultimately what you think? Who chooses your thoughts? Yourself. Now, do you have the power and to think high quality of thoughts? Yeah. Do you only have that on the weekend? <laughs> you have that all week through, isn't it? That power and that choice to choose. You might not be able to choose where you are physically. During working hours, you might have to be in the office, you might have to perform certain activities. But the quality of your thoughts that choice is in your hand, isn't it? What you think, how you think about certain things, that is in your hands. So, how to have that TGIF feeling every day? Think what you think on Friday every day. Mm -hmm. So what is it what you think on Friday? 
Yes, free. On Monday, you're also free at five. <laughs> Same as Friday, <laughs> isn't it? Might not last two days, but you can at least at the fi uh, five o'clock uh, when work finish, you can think also like that. You have the whole evening there. At the very least, simple. Uh, uh, what is the word? A simple practice. Observe your thought and choose higher quality of thoughts at any time. Now, even if it is not five o'clock, if it is nine o'clock in the morning, can I still have that feeling? You can choose it. So what is needed to choose it? Strength. Can you have fun at work? No. <laughs> Not all the time, but sometime. Sometime. What is more? Sometimes, most of the times. Fifty-fifty. Okay. So fifty-fifty during your work you have fun. Yes? <laughs> there is a saying, no? If you... <coughs> it is good to do what you love. But if not, then love what you do. <laughs> Can you do everything you do with love? We can. If we're doing it anyway, why not do it with quality and love? Isn't it? <coughs> because there are some things, in not, I'm not just talking about work, even in household, there are chores that you might not like, but still you do. Why you do it? But why you have to do? But why does it need to be done? Because it will help the overall functioning of your life. It will help the overall harmony of the family and the people who lo live in that space. So I might not like to iron, but if I don't iron, my <laughs> it kind of creates um, difficulties other moments. So if I see a bigger picture, I can learn to bring love to what I do. Isn't it? So one method to create these kinds of feelings anytime is to see a bigger picture always. And bring bring what is it? Bring quality to what you do. If you value your thoughts, then why should you spend even one moment without high quality of thoughts? So even if you're doing a chore that you do not like, still during that chore you are thinking. But during that chore, can you be thinking higher quality of thoughts? You can be, yeah. So then it is not the task that defines how you feel, but it is your choice how to feel. Isn't it? And then that quality of feeling is infused in what you do. Is that possible? Does it make sense? But we are so conditioned 
to get stuck in certain ideas. I don't like this. And whilst you're doing it, for half an hour you are repeating, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, I, don't, I really don't like this. <laughs> I hate this. So how do you feel? And you're still doing it anyway. And tomorrow you will be doing it again. <laughs> and day after tomorrow again. So who is making my life miserable? My boss? <laughs> my work? The, the person I have to give mortgage to? Those are external situations and some of it is not in my hands. But what is in my hands is what I think. And this in itself, to realize that, that there is a choice of what I think, regardless of the situation. This is a very big step. And to exercise that power of choice every moment. That is self-mastery. You like that? TGIF. <laughs> So every day, have these kinds of thoughts. <coughs> and there are many situations, even there are things that one might really not like to do. And you can choose, step back and choose, should I do it or should I not do it? That is first thing. But if you decide to do it, then why not do it with quality? at least with quality internally. Can we live our lives like that? Every day? We can. Hmm? Because in whose hand is it that what I think? In whose hand is it what goes on inside? That is in my hand. That is not decided by my boss. That is not decided by whoever, whatever, my neighbors, or my in-laws, or my whatever, partner. That is decided by me. Exercise that power of choice. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are there are two things. No. One, a friend of, good friend of ours. <coughs> he is always given the duty to wash the dishes, <laughs> which he doesn't like. <laughs> so he gives this simple example, but I tried it out myself, and it really works for me, at least. He doesn't like to wash the dishes, and he always used to get that duty, that chore, <laughs> chore, <laughs> and sometimes big amounts of dishes. So one time, he just decided he's going to shift his mindset. And he said, I'm not washing the dishes, I'm playing with water. <laughs> I'm playing with water. And so he starts playing <laughs> with water and splashing and playing with water <laughs> and, and with, uh, what is it, the dishes. And he said, even at some stage, he said, and the dishes smile at me when they are cleaned. <laughs> so he shifted that I have to do this in, in what? In fun, yeah. He's having fun. Don't know, every time I see him wash, I know what he's doing. <laughs> so he is having fun and he makes me happy also seeing him do that. <laughs> and he said, the dishes smile at me. They're so happy when they're clean now. <laughs> and the forks. <coughs> and he say, and he, one time he said to me, Androna, all these dishes, they smile at the people who eat from them also. <laughs> 
So he, his, his mindset and his attitude is different. Now we might think that is childish, but he is, he has changed a chore into a game. Yeah, in moments of happiness. Now I might think this is childish, but who is more wise? <laughs> he is having fun with chores that many others would dread and feel, uh, what is it, uh, miserable about. Again, <laughs> again. This is one way, not to, <clears throat> at this level, shift things into a game. Well, uh, this is how he did it, with a simple task that we all recognize. Because many people don't like dishes, is it? Anyone here likes dishes? Washing dishes? No. <laughs> anyway, New Yorkers eat out, so I don't think they <laughs> wash a lot of dishes anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> the other thing is, we can choose to have certain themes that we are reflecting on. And I think this is part of the uh, uh, what is it? The issue. We have not, many of us have not learned to use our power to think and reflect. And we just think about whatever comes in front of us. And that is also why we are so often so dependent on being entertained. Because we somehow, for whatever reason, have not learned to entertain ourselves in our mind. Mm -hmm. And this is why many of us also do not like to be quiet, or do not like to be alone, or cannot be alone, because somehow we cannot enjoy our own company. Somehow we cannot enjoy the, our own mind. So we need others to entertain us, or we need television to entertain us, or what is it, Facebook, or <laughs> whatever, Instagram, <laughs> social media, or Broadway shows, all the time, busy, busy, busy with external things. Sometimes it appears as if we are not able to just be with ourselves and enjoy our own company. And this also has to do with quality of thoughts. Now, <clears throat> one of the things, and this is from my own uh, uh, practice, <clears throat> every morning I choose two or three things to reflect on during the day. Now, in the morning I meditate and I have a class on spiritual knowledge, and there are two or three things, usually, sometimes only one, that excites me so much that I use it the whole day in my free moments to think on. And it can be any one of these also. Then there are many other topic, topics. So if we do not need tremendous amount of intellectual thoughts when washing the dishes. Now, most of it is done kind of even thoughtless. <laughs> no? So whilst you're washing the dishes, you can be thinking higher thoughts. You can be thinking your themes through. Then there are many such moments when you're on the subway, when you're taking a cup of tea or coffee, you're taking a short break at work, or in between uh, uh, what? You shift from one task to another at work. There's so many moments that you can use your thoughts and to deepen your reflections or to think certain things through. But what many times happen, we don't have a reservoir of themes to think about. 
So we don't have a reservoir of themes to think about, and then what happens when we have a free moment? We're distracted, or we start gossiping in our mind. <laughs> about this one, about that one, what happened, about the past, worries, things that are useless appear in our mind again. And we start thinking about that over and over and over again, because our mind is not occupied with something constructive, or something more positive, or something even empowering, or something um, enriching. We have left our mind unattended. And then it grasps hold of whatever comes in front of it, or of the past. And we start again thinking about those same things. Or we say, I hate washing the dishes, I hate washing the dishes, I really don't like washing the dishes, why should I be doing that? Someone else should do I should get the dishwasher, whatever. <laughs> <coughs> Now, our mind is one of our most valuable possessions. But we have not learned to take care of it. And so it plays mischief with us. To just take back control of your mind. Not with force, but with love and feed it themes and thoughts that are exciting for you, that are interesting for you, that are nourishing, that are enriching, that are empowering. And use them to be your be own best companion. No, what do we look in com what do we look for in company? So how uh, <laughs> sometimes now you are with certain people and you feel so good. With certain people you want to be with them all the time. Not necessarily dependent, but you look forward to being with them. Or one moment, uh, or one meeting with them, it enriches you so much that you feel so empowered and light, and you look forward to that meeting again. Now, what defines meetings like that? They radiate good energy. <coughs> Attachment? Why attachment? You like their company? Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is a feeling of an exchange that is sincere. Okay. There is a feeling of harmony. Now can you be that for yourself? that you look forward to being with yourself <laughs> also. No, it doesn't exclude being with others, but can you also feel that about yourself? That you always have something to offer to yourself, that you are sincere. With whom are you 24 hours, 24-7? Do you offer yourself the company of quality, a quality company, through your thoughts? Other people, what they give you is also what they think and how they think and how they are. And they express that, and you feel pleasant about that. 
but we can also do that for ourselves, learn to do that for ourselves, isn't it? <coughs> but there are also people that we want to run away from, isn't it? <laughs> there are also people that we think <laughs> <laughs> we avoid people who demand all kinds of things or people who are quick to take offense, quick to offend. People who are always wanting something from you. We kind of, so, uh, people who get angry, people who are, uh, what is it? Um, uh, unpredictable in their anger or in their arrogance or whatever, you kind of, sometimes we try to avoid that. No? <laughs> Does that happen in New York? <laughs> now, <clears throat> are, are people who complain all the time, no, whenever you meet them, they complain. Whenever it's something not good, whenever something else, or those who gossip. Now, we can avoid other people who do that. But when we do that ourselves, we cannot avoid ourselves. <laughs> True? <laughs> we had to put up with it. Sometimes I feel no some someone is a bit some company is uh, someone is complaining or a bit aggressive or whatever and you feel kind of unpleasant, but then thought comes of compassion, because I have choice to be move away from, but they have to be with themselves. All the <laughs> yeah, I have choice to move away, but they cannot move away from themselves. So also, are we good company for ourselves? And the thoughts you have on Friday, you can have any other day also. <coughs> you might, your physical activity may be something else. But those quality of thoughts you can have any other day. You want to say anything? <coughs> <laughs> yeah, but we do not need to be alone all the time. No, but if we enjoy our own company, we can also enjoy our own company whilst we are with others. Yeah. <laughs> no, but we—I mean—we're exploring this topic and we're beginning to see the possibilities. Because it is not that we have to be isolated and alone and living alone somewhere on the mountain. Although we might sometimes love that idea. <laughs> but we are social beings. We are interactive beings. But if we are more balanced inside, then we can deal with situations in a more pleasurable way. At least, even though the situation might not be Optimum, at least I can choose optimum thoughts and optimum response to the situation and a highest attitude. And that in itself can be useful. 
unpleasant. No, it is like a game. If, they, for example, if there is the attitude of game in life, not like this friend of mine who is playing with water. No? <clears throat> In a game, it is not that everything all the time is easy and smooth. There are challenges and obstacles. And you rise to the occasion to overcome the obstacle, to deal with the challenges, to use your skills more. And that makes you enjoy the game more. But it is not that it was a smooth ride. No, it's porters. The most fulfilling, uh, uh, how do you call that, games they have is where there are challenges and they rose to the occasion. In, in, in Holland they say to, <laughs> to, to play football with a team who is uh, blind? What is the what is the jo fun in that? Now you want to play with someone who is at least as good as you, isn't it? So now life offers us many nice special effects <laughs> to play. Some are pleasant and some are smooth and easy, but other moments there are. You need your power to tolerate. You need your power <laughs> to be patient. <laughs> you need your power to be compassionate. But that is good, no? It sharpens your, your, your skills. And if you don't make it this time, next time, And workplace is the best place for this training. <clears throat> then it's time to take a break. Mm -hmm. that we need to learn to balance our life. Now, and when you go into, uh, what is this thing called, an aeropl aeroplane, when the, they introduce the safety measures and whatever, what happens? What does the air hostess say? <laughs> you first wear your own mask. Then you see whoever else need mask, even if it is a child, even if it is your baby. Because if you pass out, no one else can get your help. No? And sometimes we are so trapped in the thought that we have to. But life will go on if you are sick. And there are mm, severely sick also, whatever. We don't want to get there. But when that happens, the world doesn't stand still. Things go, things continue. And we should be realistic about this also. This idea of have to, why, until I die? No. Are we, are we living because of that? I, I'm not saying this right. Uh, is life meant to be lived like that? <coughs> and we may feel like that, but... <laughs> Time to take a break. Simple. There is another 
area that is useful to know. We all have as if two sides within, within us. We have this side that is playful, and we have this side that is <laughs> stressful, <laughs> emotional, <laughs> and, and also heavy and burdened and complaining all the time. We have this side in us that is light and loving and benevolent and enthusiastic. And we have this side that is the opposite. Let's keep it like that. Yeah. We have this side within us that has its root in what is angelic. And we have this other side in us that has this root in what is anger. Devil. <laughs> Little demon. No? You agree with this? There are kind of these two sides within us. <clears throat> now, and this little demon sometimes is not so little. <laughs> and this angel within us is sometimes too little. Mm. And <clears throat> now, who enjoys being with the angel? Everyone. Who enjoys being with this little <laughs> little devil? No one. Not really. Now, <clears throat> what is needed to bring out the angel? What is needed to nurture the angel? What is needed to... And what feeds this little demon inside. Now everyone, everyone has these two sides within. It is just a question of which one is more dominant at any moment in time. Now what brings out the worst and what brings out the best? <coughs> When we are made secure, that brings out in us the best. That brings out within us the noble part. That brings out within us the angel. When we are made insecure, what comes out? The monster. Yeah. More insecure, more monster. Yeah. And more secure, more the noble part in our personality. Yeah. Even when you see with children, if you make them insecure, then the they start robbing and, and being nasty. If they are made secure, if they are made content through environment for what, by whatever means, they kind of tend to bring out the best. And we all function like that. And not only we, even animals. You know, the worst uh, kind of ferocious animal if it feels secure, it is peaceful. And dogs are a good example. No, there are so many dogs when we <laughs> in the building where I live. I always meet dogs and their dogs owner in the elevator. And you see, you observe, if the dog is insecure, he's kind of either nervous or anxious or aggressive. But if the dog feels relaxed, then you know, then he is what is it? His tail <laughs> makes his tail. He looks at you and he kind of sniffs around. Living beings are like that. If we are made insecure, <coughs> worst comes out. 
And we have to deal with that ourselves, because other people just move away from us. Now, can we make ourselves secure, or more secure? One thing that happens in our mind, you know, part of this mind that has become disempowered, is we make small things big. And we o are overwhelmed by everything. And everything is too much. And anything is a problem. Because we have made everything huge. Now, can we reverse the process? Hmm? Yeah, do it with the mind. And one nice method that we use in Raj Yoga is the whole physical world, make it small. This whole physical world, can fit in this box. Will you be impressed by it? Will you be overwhelmed by it? <laughs> so in this box is New York City, but whole of the USA is in there, and, and, and uh, all the continents, and the oceans, and the moon, and the star. Everything is in this box. Will you be impressed by it? And when you walk on Fifth Avenue and you look at the Empire State, you think, oh, huge thing. If you're living in one of the buildings opposite, you think, oh, kind of nice view. If you're on an aeroplane looking down, <laughs> dot, <laughs> you can't even properly, where is it actually? And then you're not impressed. Now, in our mind, we have made things big. And this habit, this tendency, has become strong within us. Anything becomes a problem. Anything we make big. Make it small. Tomorrow it will not be there. One nice uh, uh, phrase that I use for myself, if there is a situation, one of the things I think about it, Will I remember this next month? Most of the things I won't even remember tomorrow. <laughs> so I make, why do I make a big fuss out of it? Now, will I remember this in 10 years' time? Most of the things I won't even remember. Will this be an issue in another 100 years? Not at all. So why uh, uh, spoil my present over something that will pass? But we make one thing, and there are so many things on top of that. If you really want to worry about things, there are billions of things to <laughs> worry about. But we take one thing and we make it so huge. So this is another nice practice. The whole physical world, just all of it in a box. Are you worried about Lilliput? You know what is Lilliput? No. <laughs> what is another word for Lilliput? Everyone understand Lilliput? Dwarves, but tiny. Like Smurfs, but tiny Smurfs, <laughs> like ants. If everything was like small, would you worry about it? You would not be impressed. So in your mind, step back from anything, any situation. Step back. See it, see a bigger perspective, and make things small. We can do this with our mind. But we have done the opposite. Instead of zooming out, we zoom in <laughs> and feel properly miserable because we have to wash the dishes every night. <laughs> mm. 
That also, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's still the same thing. If we learn to step back, no? that problem itself we see as big. But if we step back and see a bigger picture, no, one of the things that I, uh, yesterday we were talking, there was this uh, interesting discussion, and uh, <coughs> this uh, person was saying, my job, my job, my job, and some problem job. And she says she cannot stop thinking about it, and she cannot stop, she can't even sleep. And it has become such a big thing. And so one question was asked, um, who were you before job? And she was quiet. She said, I can't even remember. No. But you were someone before that situation happened. That situation has come and it will go, but you are still there. And to because this is what happens in a situation, we make it as if it is our whole life and our whole existence. But step back and see a bigger perspective. I was someone before that. There were things before that. I can at least return to that. Does it make sense? But we are consumed by that situation. And many times when we are in the situation, it is difficult to stop it. But that is why it is good to prepare ourselves beforehand. See a bigger perspective. Even if you do not, are not able to put the whole physical world in the box, but at least zoom out of this this present situation or moment and see a bigger perspective but many times we have we are so sucked into it that we have lost sight of a bigger picture but we cannot uh what is it <coughs> No one can really change that for us. Only we ourselves. Step back. Now, if what would happen if you never wash the dishes? <laughs> Get paper plates. <laughs> Get paper plates. <laughs> huh? Buy new plates. Every time, <laughs> every time. <laughs> no, but that would be a choice then. <clears throat> but if you do not take a certain action uh, and a certain decision inside, it will make your overall life very uncomfortable. And more and more and more uncomfortable. It reaches a day when you can't even walk in your kitchen because. <laughs> so, even if I don't like to wash the dishes, if I see a bigger picture, it makes my life more comfortable to deal with this and come to some conclusion or make some choice or just do what I have to do. Because overall, it will add to my quality of life. But to just leave it pending, pending, pending. And so again, see a bigger picture. And that can be but something as simple as washing the dishes. What is the bigger picture? I like to live in a clean house. <laughs> and I like to eat from clean plates. And I like to work in a clean kitchen. So out of love for that, I do the dishes with love. See a bigger picture. Yeah. So
so this is one other uh, uh, what is it aspect or method to get into that feeling. See a bigger picture, zoom out as much as possible. And another thing is <coughs> identify your values and your standards and don't lower them. Don't lower them. <coughs> this Secure and insecure. How can we make ourselves more and more secure so as to nurture that angelic part within us? Hmm? <coughs> So one thing we said is step back, see a bigger picture, but also make things small. And it goes together, no? Stepping back means also you kind of make it smaller. What else can we do to make us more secure? Mm. Yeah. Oh, very good. Very good. Yeah. No, or just no, no, a friend of ours uh, uh, yesterday, Tuesday. He was not, he was, I think, or late 40s, early 50s. He just slept and he didn't wake up. Anything can happen anytime. True or not true? <coughs> so why um, not give full appreciation and full value to this moment, to what you have right now, because anything can change anytime. And it won't come to ask your permission to change. <coughs> what else? Mm -hmm. Very good, excellent. We live in a society and in a culture worldwide where we are from birth as if told you are nothing and you are no one. And you have to acquire, and you have to accumulate, and you have to do to be valuable to be secure. And this is what we are told. Uh, verbally or, or uh, through, what is it, uh, ideas that are just communicated through, to us to di in different ways. The spiritual model is the exact opposite. The spiritual model says you are a being with infinite potential. You are a being with, with angelic potential. <coughs> but we have forgotten that. We have not addressed that. We have not nurtured that within us. And so maybe the first step is to come back to that realization 
the first step may be to acknowledge that, to explore that. There is that higher, noble part within me. And so, <clears throat> one way to bring out that and nurture that is to use this bigger perspective and play with this attitude of we have come to play a game. If this is the physical world, we have come to play this game of life. And you play the game, but your value, innate value, it doesn't depend on the game. You are who you are regardless of how you play the game and if you win or not win. You are this angelic being, being with angel potential. And to shift our consciousness, that is, what is the word? To shift our perspective and to, uh, to shift our self-image. that can promote this feeling of more secure. But it is a different paradigm, because it is true. At this moment, we live in a culture that promotes this. And what does it do? It brings out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It brings out the not so noble part in us. So what we can do is play with this. No, and this is where no this also this um what is the word? This suggestion to spend more time reflecting quality themes, spend more time choosing quality thoughts, spend more time reflecting and questioning certain conditioned beliefs that are there. Spend time making things small instead of <laughs> making things big. Spend time reflecting on this idea of life as a game. And playing the game. Job is not job. Job is a game. With its challenges, with its uh, strong opponents, but still. There, one friend of ours, uh, with some, <laughs> he, he says this with a certain regularity, and it kind of reminds me. He says, don't argue with an, <laughs> a bit harsh word, don't argue with an idiot. Because first he brings you down to his level, and at his level, he is expert. You understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> so you maintain your clarity, you maintain your standard, you maintain your sense of value, you maintain your sense of justice. Don't lower it. And, and of course, famous people in our world, you know, someone like Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, they did not lower their standards. And they did not argue with <laughs> yeah. but not their dignity. 
but not their dignity. No. And even though they pay the price at the physical level, do you think that their feeling of quality of their life is less? You know, I don't know if you have seen, Nelson Mandela lived in a cell which was so small, 28 years. But how did he come out? Had high, stronger, wiser, more compassionate, and what he talks about? Reconciliation. Now that is not someone who was miserable 28 years. That was someone who had quality of thinking regardless of the situation. Now we are not all Nelson Mandela and we don't have to be either. But we can be like, we, have, we can have those qualities within our own context. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <coughs> if we value our life, value your thoughts, value your time, value your words, don't bring it down. <coughs> yeah? That is why you don't argue with. <laughs> <laughs> you don't argue, you hold your standards. <laughs> if I was not practical, I would not be living so many years already. I mean, you find your way, you might not be living as others are living. That's okay also. No? You don't have to do what they are doing or how they are doing. We have to live our own life and feel good about that. And this is not even really deep spirituality, this is just common sense. <clears throat> but the spiritual perspective is even more powerful. We are spiritual beings, and we visit, come and play the game, and this visit will end. We don't really need anything here. The game will continue whether we play or not, but we will also continue, no matter what. The spiritual being. What if you're not good at playing the game? Mm -hmm. Or maybe another question is, what does it mean to play the game well? Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, any game, tennis or swimming or whatever, sports, do we need to be good at it to enjoy it? No, I don't need to be a gold Olympic gold medalist to enjoy swimming and to enjoy the water and to play with the water. <coughs> But it is, it is when I identify with winning that medal and feel that I am good if I get it, then I will be miserable for most of the time because that medal, even if I get it, I will only get it once and that's it. Or maybe another time, or another Olympics, but, <laughs> but I can still enjoy playing. And that is if I approach the game from my inner fullness. I'm just plunging and playing with water. I don't need to be an Olympic gold medalist. If it happens, it's nice, but I don't need to, to enjoy swimming, <laughs> to enjoy the water. If I approach it from an inner state of fullness, and this is where spirituality comes in. The game is extra. I am already an existing experiencer. <coughs> and if I come back to that state of consciousness, that noble nature will emerge and will be experienced more and more. 
but we we uh, we define ourselves and we define our value based upon the game and based on what we achieve here and how much we can get instead of who we are regardless of the game and this is where meditation comes in. This is where spiritual understandings come in and practice to really go back to that original experience of that noble part of the self and nurture that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. True success is when I don't define myself based upon the game. And I don't define success based upon the game. But based on the angelic that is there innately. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> More than Friday, <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, play with it. So there were many different uh, uh, suggestions. No? Stay with qual choose quality of thoughts. Exercise your power to choose your thoughts. Give value to your time. Give value to your words. Give value to your thoughts. Use an attitude of game. Uh, what was the other one? Step back. Bigger perspective. And if you can, this is very useful. Put the whole physical world in a box and put on the lid. <laughs> Tiny lily put drama going on. And you laugh at it. <coughs> Play with this. Any final thoughts or questions? Ah. <laughs> 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 this is a bit of a harsh saying, but um, but I'm trying to say if you are in a space where you, uh, if you have divine certain qualities and certain understandings, don't negotiate that. Don't lower that. Don't give it away. Even then, it, it doesn't build our self-respect either, if we do that. Now, I'm saying, I, I would not choose that word, but you, you understand what I'm trying to say. Don't, don't, um, what is the word? Doubt self, because that is often what we do. <clears throat> and where you don't know, then just be honest, I don't know, and then school yourself there. Get more wisdom in that area. But we do not necessarily need to just observe whatever has been thrown at us. <clears throat> And this is where the world's examples are also useful. Mother Teresa once came to New York many, many, many years ago. And she saw the plight of uh, uh, HIV patients. And she, what she did? What did she do? Anyone know? She hugged them also, but she went to the mayor's office and she decided she's not going to go until she gets a space for them. <laughs> and this secretary trying to get rid of her, everyone trying to get rid of her, but, and she gets her 
she gets what she wants because she is convinced she is doing something for a good cause. Everybody tells her it's not possible, it's not useful, it is not possible, but she doesn't know. And sometimes we are too quick in giving up our values, too quick in giving up our, our ideas, too quick in giving up our ideals. If we do that, it might be a smooth ride, but we ourselves will not think highly of ourselves. But, I mean, this topic is vast and we can go on endlessly. But it is useful to just take one or two of these suggestions or find your own and start implementing them. Start playing with them and, and explore to see the difference. Because we can give many good talks and many uh, intelligent uh, uh, lectures <coughs> and we can listen to all of them but it only is useful if I start experimenting with it in, our, in my own life. So just simply observe your thoughts and choose for high in any situation, choose. And this is something you can do quietly, incognito, no one knows. Your boss will not tell you off because he won't know. <laughs> no one will tell you anything for this. You just choose. Different and if you don't know what topics, find things that you are interested in to think about. There are so many different areas. But just this idea also of we are visitors here, we are travelers. Soul is a traveler on this planet. It's also a nice thing to think about. Okay, let's close. <coughs> time time is valuable and it also goes no? <laughs> it goes <coughs> let's just have a minute of and let's just come back to the awareness of there is an outer world and there is an inner world. And also reflect on this understanding that the quality of life does not so much depend on the outer world, but the quality of my life much more depends on the quality of my inner world. And just reflect on this. quality of thoughts 
is in my hands. And thus also the quality of feelings. The quality of actions and words. All of this is part or has its roots in my inner world. And that is where quality of life begins, in the inner world. Let us explore again and kind of discover that more noble part of self. Acknowledge the angel within. using spiritual understandings that we exist as spiritual beings timeless travelers beings of consciousness And the whole physical world is just a temporary experience. And one can use that image of light, tiny star of light operating from the center of the forehead, just behind the eyes, the soul, the inner being, the higher being, the player who transcends the limitations of matter a being of wisdom a being that is free A being that is immortal. And as we gradually end this experiment, we continue the journey. Reflecting on being a master of my inner world, master of my own thoughts. And we continue the journey Reminding ourselves
that we are here to play and to travel Thank you Okay, well, so Thank you for the attention and the concentration. On the desk you all can find the program of the coming month, but coming Saturday, I think it is, yeah, Saturday, a meditation course is starting, so those who are interested, most welcome. And um, those who have already done the meditation course, <laughs> There are possibilities of follow-up. If you have interest, let us know. And also, um, these Thursdays are ongoing. And if you would want to receive the program in your email, then please leave your join the mailing list. But also something new, we are still experimenting and the quality is not that high, but we are doing these things on Facebook Live, and but it gets recorded. So if you would want to but listen to it again or share it with someone else, then just go on our Facebook page and we are trying to record at least the Thursday sessions. <laughs> So we're doing our best. Yesterday's was a bit blurred, but <laughs> but it was Spanish, so many of you might not have understood anyway. <clears throat> but we're improving, playing the game with high tech. <laughs> not so high, I think, but for us it's high tech. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good evening. And there is some sweet at the back.